Welcome everyone to Ace Combat 6's DLC Showcase, Part 6. In this video we're going to showcase the SU-33 Flanker D, or as I like to call it, the only good Russian plane in this game. But we can save the bear coop roasting for later. Now, the flanker has, aside from its base, four DLC that we will test, as well as its idle master, which we will not. Um, see the idle master stream if you want to see that. So, for the base, or er, flanker. There's really only one choice. I mean, we could go with this one that's, you know, the generic blue, Russian blue, which is okay. We could go the SP, Fenkis, but we have the Estevakian which is Strigan. And why wouldn't you pick that? So we're going Strigan. And... There. Garuda team, time to take off. Flanker boys, unite. Now I'm going to confess I do like the flanker. I didn't used to. Um, but after flying with it, both this game and a 7, and especially Assault Horizon Legacy, the flanker uh, grew on me. That being said, I will still take an American plane over a flanker. Because I do think American planes typically are of better quality than their flanker counterparts. Except Starscream hit Stragon 1. The Strigan livery looks so good. I love it so much. When the flanker doesn't flank. I mean, just look at that beautiful livery there. Black with the red trim. Battling bots in Black Ops 3, huh? Responsive that was, and this is the base flanker. Shit.
Boom, we're false. The Estovakian threat level has been reduced. You should be able to hold out against them. Crew to one, we've almost got them. Let's do this one plane at a time. See the flankers. Uh, best trace being its maneuverability, speed. I just shot Sham right there. Okay, is there ever a situation where someone's in pain and a few words would help a lot? Yeah. Um, and my biggest fear in that situation, Salty, is. Saying the absolute worst things without even meaning to, and making the whole thing worse.
if I can take a stab in the dark, Salty, is this the, uh... Does that question have anything to do with what's been happening on the Sly server of late? I don't really know much about what happened. In gun range. That's what I like to hear. Our Air Force is holding down the enemy. Um, Keep it up. The Estor at least on the Sly server. Now. Drive them out of America. Um, so I'm kind of, I guess, an outside observer, but. There's... In that situation, there's not a lot you can really say. Their mind's made up. Um... I guess right now, the best thing to do in that situation is... Just... Be there for them when they need you. Strigan versus Strigan, who wins? Go. Well, I saw that this peninsula right here kind of. Like at this part, kind of looked like Manhattan. A little bit. What the hell was that? Where are they coming from? Enemy cruise missile incoming. Those are no ordinary cruise missiles. A fake like hell if you want to help us alive. Damn it! Strigan versus Strigan. Strigan wins. Okay, fine. Strigan versus Strigon. That was awesome. <laughs> the Nimbus missile is just gonna fly right by. Warning, additional enemy planes have been spotted on radar. You don't wanna know how many. This is Strigan 12. Target a goal. Strigan 12. Ha 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 As much as I love the Strigan livery and Strigan 1 and 12, Strigan Squad is a joke. It was honestly a mistake for them to show up in this mission. I understand why they did, because it's... Um, they're based off the Agayon. But if they were to show up here, they should have been like Yellow Squadron in Ace 4's 5th mission. Uh, pipeline, I believe. Where they show up, but you can't kill them. That way, people would be terrified with them, or just like, ah, oh, fine, I'll leave. Eventually. But the fact that you can kill them in this mission. Yeah, they should have been invincible in that. It, like, Yellow Squadron Lifeline. That's, that's what I was thinking of. But they're not. So the it's just like you can wipe out half of the reinforcements. I've gotten six. 
in this mission before. Our military has escaped destruction because of your valiant efforts on the battle. But our capital, Grace Maria, has been temporarily occupied. And right here, Estavakia, four. And our central government has been usurped by the nation of Estevakia. At and most, in response, you should be allowed to kill what? Council unanimously adopted a resolution of open war against the Federal but Republic of Estevakia. They should have been invincible, never retreated, and, and be constantly hounding you. Once out of the beautiful country. Forcing you to leave. The reason why I say, at least in free mission, you should be able to kill at least one, is if you're using the CFA and can't kill something, that's what we in the business like to call heresy. Anyway, now we get to the good stuff, the DLC flankers. As you can see, the base stats of the flanker. Very mobile, very fast, a little bit weaker on the defense and stability. <laughs> I should have been able to kill that. Pasternak wasn't a Strigan team member in Mission 1. He was a member of Vampire Team. Flanker has almost no air to ground, other than just rocket launchers, but don't underestimate those. But a shit ton of air to air. Which it's easy to see why it was the choice for the enemy A squadron. Now, for the first one, we go with Ace 2's aircraft. A faithful recreation of the Ace Combat 2 aircraft performance design. Outstanding stability and a lack of recoil provide for a truly unique sense of flight. Although it boasts improved speed and performance, this aircraft lacks SP weapons, which were not introduced until after Ace Combat 2. This is basically a faithful reconstruction of Phoenix's cannon plane from Ace 2, the SU-35, or at least the box cannon. As you can see from the base, we have increased mobility, defense, stability, and speed. But due to the lack of SP weapons, our air-to-air -air and air-to-ground cap er, offensive capabilities have been decreased. But I love how... I, I love the Phoenix emblem on the tail. And it's the first one to actually have that iconic uh, arrow on the right side. Uh, just for the heels. Garuda team, time to take off. All we have is 120 sidewinders. Let's wreck shit up. Also, because it's an Ace 2 aircraft, no high G turns. Although it handles beautifully compared to the other Ace 2 aircraft, it's not sluggish at all. Yeah, this, this plane here feels like uh, Ace-5 maneuvering, at least to me. I've never played Ace-2, so I don't know how it stacks up. PSM, I dare you! <laughs> Engaged with 
I don't think I'm going to be able to even spawn the Hornets, though, with the lack of multi-lock missiles. But we'll try it. I'm not going to be able to do it. So I'm going to leave a UH-9. So we can have a little bit of fun before this trigger to show up. Yeah, like all the Ace 2 uh, things, there's little to no recoil. I'm just barely touching the stick and it. Uh, the pitch and uh, roll stop as soon as you let go of the stick. Just like in the earlier games. Which bridge? Exactly. There are literally at least three or four bridges that are d down. I love the look of this plane. I keep trying to hide G turn, even though I know I can't. <laughs> Muscle memory is a hard thing to break. Uh oh. Okay, there it goes. My browser went dead for a few seconds there. mission. Crash like him, waste the plane in the water. But I haven't been hit yet, why would I crash?
I almost split Est into the ground there. We've had enough fun. Let's go ahead and summon the Strigan and see how well that is. Oh, I know who you mean, Starscream. Killing the Strigan team is going to be a little bit harder with no multi-locks. But I do have a charged assault meter. And Shamrock has multi-locks. Two Sidewinder kills, or two Sidewinder string kills, I will take it. And we did force them to leave. But yeah, in the, in the Fire Zenication story that I'm making, um, I do have an ace squad that jumps you after a super weapon attack similar to this, but you can't kill them. You have to flee. Largely because of what Sly was saying. They overused Strigan Squadron. Alright, so, Our military has this one was fun, um, the nation, Henry, but our, my main criticism with the uh, Ace-2 one is, I really miss my SP weapons. Attack. Okay, the next one. Yellow 13. 
This slightly armored aircraft possesses unsurpassed maneuverability, boasting excellent turning performance. Witnessing it cut a razor's path is proof enough of its place as king of the sky. The elite yellow squadron stands as the pride of Arusia, with Yellow 13 leading the hand-picked group of five wingmen. Caring little for personal glory, Yellow 13 sought only to protect his wingmen and to encounter a rival of worthy skill. Now, compared to the base, we get it's the same amount of SP weapons. But look at those stats. Mobility and air-to-air -air are almost maxed out. Speed, almost maxed out. Little to no air-to-ground, almost no stability, and no defense. If you get hit in this aircraft, you are dead. Even on the normal difficulty, one missile will kill you. That being said, when you high G turn this this bad boy, you are literally post stall maneuvering. So as long as you can avoid getting hit, this plane will tear shit up. Garuda team, time to take off. And honestly, I can't, I can't decide for myself which flanker uh, livery I like better, whether it's yellow squadrons or strigans, because they both look amazing. What about you guys? Do you guys prefer Strigan livery or yellow squadron livery? Because I can't decide which one I like better. This mobility. Ghost died. Garuda one, Talisman, and Garuda two, Shamrock. We are currently in a state of emergency. Our nation is under attack by unknown forces. Do whatever you can to fend off the invasion. Garuda two, Roger that. Garuda one, you call the shots. Feel the speed and performance of this aircraft. It is phenomenal. Falls are here. So now let's have some fun. Unbelievable! I say we teach him a few manners before we kick him out. 
Watch your necks out there. Stick with close range targets and run them down. Just look at how agile and nimble this thing is. If that missile would have hit me, I'd have been dead. <laughs> Again, which bridge? that one falcon. There we go. Got all the airborne tanks are dead. Hello. There's some mirages that need killing. get a full assault bar here. Hit. Careful now. The enemy has you on radar. 
How would you know that, Shamrock? And you down. The Estovakian threat level is even lower now. Drive them out of America. What's this? Missiles. Number three, your radio's down. Number three, where are you? Outrun the Nimbus. So close to a full assault bar. Oh well, more than enough for the Strigans. Okay, place your bets. Yellow 13 versus Strigan. Who wins? Yeah, no. Well, basically, with this plane, you either don't take a hit or you die. Even on normal difficulty, gunfire will will get you into the double digits in like one bullet. I think one bullet does like 20% damage. You literally have no defense. Destruction because of your valiant effort. S rank. Our capital Grace Maria has been temporarily occupied. Only three strings left. And our central government has been the you know, our forces what the Yeah, I, I love the Yellow 13 DLC. Uh, but one mistake Attention and pilots. you're dead. Our damage from the attacks is widespread throughout the Okay, so the next DLC, Rosgrease. Now we lose some mobility, speed, and air-to-air, -air, but we gain a shit ton of defense and stability. This is the flanker you want if you want to be able to tank some hits, but still want to be agile. Time to take off. As you can see, we we're, we're not a, nearly as maneuverable or fast. We are 
currently in a state of emergency. Our nation is under attack by unknown forces. Do whatever you can to fend off the invasion. Garuda 2, roger that. Garuda 1, you call the shots. And I can guarantee you we can hold a high G turn for longer. See, almost one and a half full loops. Whereas with Yell 13, um, not so much. Shambles for years. Looks like they finally snapped. Yeah, this this livery is a good looking livery too. But then again, Razgra's colors always look good. Boom, boom, boom. Alright, I need to stop using the multi locks here. But that was only 14% or 4% damage because Razgri's tanks. makes sense given that they're an Ocean well former Ocean squadron typically American fighter doctrine is bring the pilots back home alive that's why American aircraft typically have a lot more redundant systems in terms of ejection seats armor um, 
it's why American aircraft are typically heavier and less agile than their Russian counterparts. And definitely so in World War II. So it makes sense that um, a former Ocean squadron like Razgar is would uh, put a lot in defense. They want to bring their pilots home alive. So they're going to build their planes to help that as much as possible. Hit. Oh, yep. One died. Okay. Eh, nope. Eh, come on. Little more. Fucking hell. There we go. Nope. Eh. Enemy plane there. It's only about maybe between 8 to 12. Oh, there goes one of them. Actually, there goes three of them. Take command from here. Alright, out of Amram's. Takes a year to get that counterattack working. Flanker. 
Our military has escaped destruction because but our capital Horse Grace Maria has been taken and our sent the nation of in response the Republic of United States. The Attention all pilots. Actually, no. we're going to do Vitoze for this last one. Just because I want some variety. Okay, so for the final flanker, Nosferatu might. Uh, yeah, the Nosferatu can annihilate Stricken Team. Especially both you and Shamrock are firing your ADMMs. Anyway, Crimson Wing. This is another sky painting aircraft, so its base stats are the same as the base plane. Save for the fact that you have 800 Sidewinders. They will be colored red. Yeah, monotone color crimson aircraft. A modified sky painting aircraft for shows and exhibitions. This aircraft is equipped with colored smoke missiles. The missile payload has been maximized for show purposes. Garuda one, pop up. Are we red Garuda team? Time to take off. I am the Red Baron. They're here. Head back to the base if you need supplies. You can land there at any time. What's up, Nugget? We're on the last flanker DLC that I'm gonna showcase. The Crimson Wing. A formation of enemy bombers is on its way to Vitoze. Take them out. With red missile smoke. This territory is all we've got left. Garuda team, it's in your hands. We've got to intercept those bombers. Stay within range of the radar facility. That should give you the upper hand in battle. Where are the enemy bombers? Yeah, y you did. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, but I always archive all my streams, so even if you do miss one, it's always, you can always uh, watch it either on YouTube or on the Twitch archives. Yeah, compared to the Ross Grease and uh, Yellow 13 flankers, the base stats feel a little sluggish. Either that, it's the 800 Sidewinders I'm carrying. Phantoms. Must kill Phantom. Oh yeah, this is a colored aircraft. That's why it has 800 Sidewinders, so you can quote-unquote 
paint the sky. I think A6 was the first game to allow you to have colored smoke trails. And I know they also had it in uh, Assault Horizon too, where you could actually pick your color. I'm not sure if they had it in Legacy. Or Infinity. All phantoms must die. You're really something, Garuda One. I love the smoke trails. <laughs> um, I don't think so, Nugget. Um, because all the colored aircraft have 800 sidewinders. That's the max that. The stats will allow you to have. Oh, get off my six piece of crap phantoms. Enemy bombers are approaching the city. Intercept. I bet one. Enemy plane down. But now the uh, colored aircraft have 800 sidewinders, so. You can have fun with uh, all the colored smoke. I love this banter. All planes, it's time to get on home now. Try and make it back for supper. The enemy bombers have been intercepted. Powerful. Okay. Oh yeah. The the banter between the Amerian pilots is my favorite in the series. Because they give each other shit, but you can tell it's you know the fun kind. All right. Judgment time. So, my number one ranking for the Flanker DLC goes to Yellow Squadron. If you get hit, you will die. However, the mobility and speed of this aircraft is so high that if you get hit, you deserve to die because you should have been able to dodge that. And I speak from experience because I've died in this a lot, but I still love it so much. That being said, um, it's only for, you know, th this is not a plane for IGN to use. Because I can guarantee you IGN would give this plane a 2 out of 10. 
not enough water because they would die constantly. But for aces like you and I, this plane is a dream come true. Second would go to the Razgris. Slightly less speed and maneuverability, but you gain an immense amount of defense and stability. Also, the liveries kick ass too. Um, but this flanker is for those that um, want to be able to take a few hits because as a Rosgree's plane, it can. Oh yeah, it's very nice stats all around. Number three is the base. It's one of the few planes where the base stats uh, of the initial plane are almost perfect. Um, also, the Estevakian base livery is amazing. To be honest, I think I like the livery on this one better than Yellow 13's. Just because it's black and red instead of gray and yellow. Um, it's got a little bit less defense than the Razgris. Um, but it's slightly more mobile because of it. Number four is the Idolmaster, Miki. Largely because you get more weapons with it. Um, it's more stable while maintaining the speed and maneuverability of the other. But you also get a bit more air-to-air -air and air ground because of the extra weaponry. Um, also, this is the best first Idolmaster plane to start out with because it has no quirk. That is its quirk. It's unremarkable. So if you want an anime waifu on your wing, but you don't want to have to deal with random shit, this is the Idolmaster for you. Number five... The Ace-2 Scarface. Um, very good speed and maneuverability, as well as stability. Very good defense, almost as good as the Rosgreens. The reason why I put it so low is because you don't have special weapons, because it wasn't a thing in Ace-2, and you can't high G turn, which wasn't a thing in Ace-2. So because you can't high G turn, its mobility actually is deceptively worse than any other of the flankers. That being said, the livery is fun and um, the it's actually kind of fun to fly or to pretend you're back in Ace 2 but with the way this thing flies. And last is the Crimson Wing. The only thing remarkable about it is uh, the 800 missiles. And I think that actually hurts its mobility a little bit. Um, and unfortunately for the Crimson Wing, the red is kind of boring. It doesn't have this. but the red missile trails are fun. All in all, the flanker is one of my favorite aircrafts in this game. And there are no bad DLC in the flanker lineup. Tomorrow, we'll be doing part seven 
my favorite aircraft that isn't a superplane in this game, the F-15E. One base and four DLC. In previews for the DLC, we've got Active, Cypher, Pixie, and Rosgrease. So I hope you guys join me tomorrow, same time-ish, for um, the Strike Eagle. And may the Golden King smile upon us.